There's lots of relic hunters all over the world and they're not necessarily interested in single coins. They just want big targets and deep. So what settings am I using with the ORX to complement this X35 coil on lower frequencies? Well, it's program number one, it's the gold mode. But I'm making just one or two slight adjustments to it. First of all, I'm gonna go into the menu, sensitivity 95, I'm gonna leave that exactly as it is. Drop down, now it defaults at 17.2 kilohertz, if you've got the X35 coil on that is. I'm gonna lower the frequency down to four kilohertz. Drop it down one more. Reactivity two, probably gonna leave that for a bit. Let's drop it down one more. Disc IAR, I'm gonna turn that right up to five. Now, disc IAR will eliminate some surface iron, but deep iron, it's still gonna give you a good signal on. Iron volume on. Once more, threshold. Now, this is one of my favorites. Threshold gives a background carrier in the headphones, so it's kind of gives you a baseline. So let's turn it up, and you'll hear it coming in. That's all there is to it. That's my settings for deep relics using an X35 coil. All I need to do now is ground balance. So first of all, we find a clean piece of soil, pump the coil a few times, and you can hear the ground balance is wrong here. Press the pinpoint button once, now it's ground balance, and the two numbers on your screen should correspond. Now the secret to using this mode is listening out for the right type of signal. There's gonna be loads of signals out there, but we just need one specific signal. It's gonna be faint, it's gonna be very soft, but it's gonna be wide. Lots and lots of signals out there, they're gonna be short and choppy, we're gonna ignore them. We just want this one particular textbook signal. It really is a game of patience. One shot, one kill. You can hear the thresholds in the background there just bubbling away. Low tone, that's iron. But don't forget, our deep target, even if it's iron, will give us a positive signal. Not what we're after, too short. You can use this method even if there's a lot of surface nails about. A top tip is keep your coil about eight, nine inches above the ground. And now you're gonna be eliminating the small nails. And believe it or not, the detector will actually go deeper on bigger targets if you take the small surface nails out of the range. There's another big target, purely ferrous, not what I want. These are all little, little irony signals. Just to give you an idea of what sort of signal I'm looking for, let me put my spade on the ground. Can you see what I'm saying now? Although the spade is ferrous, it still gives the non-ferrous sound at depth because it's a big target and the IAR will not reject this type of target. Here we go. It's quiet. It's wide. There's no meter reading, which is always a good sign. Now that's the sort of target that gets me excited. It could be ferrous, could be non-ferrous. I really don't know. So the signal starts here. And it starts coming in here. It's interesting to see that this target is quite big this way, but very narrow that way. 
I love using this search method. All right, you need nerves of steel and you need to adapt a lot of patience. You're actually using this machine as a tool. And that's the great thing about it. It can be adapted for different search scenarios. One minute you could be searching for coins, gold nuggets, or in this case, we're trying to train ourselves to listen for a specific target while ignoring everything else. It really is a game of patience. And do you know what? There might only be one big deep target in this whole field. So, you know, don't go out there using this method expecting to find lots and lots of targets. Besides that, deep targets are a nightmare to dig. You really want to go hunting with a buddy if you're using this type of search methods. So all I need to do now is dig it and see what we got. This is why it's always worth detecting with a buddy. You can share the digging. We're getting closer now. Like I say, this target, it could be ferrous, it could be non-ferrous, who knows? And there it is, it's at the bottom of the hole. That deep. Now, I've no idea what it is yet, but at this stage, I've got to be kind of careful because if that's a pipe going through, I'm going to be in all sorts of trouble. So I've got to be quite sensible when I'm digging these deep targets. From what it's looking like now, it is a pipe shape. You can see it down there. And that's a probe. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go a little bit wider on the hull and just get a better idea of what it is. If it's a pipe, then I'm gonna fill it in. And also, if you're using this method when there's a risk of military, bombs for example, you've got to be really, really careful. You just can't go gung-ho and start smashing away at things. So take care guys when you're digging deep targets. Well guys, I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to call it. I'm pretty sure it's a pipe. And also we've got some strict laws here in the UK about how deep we can go. And I really don't want to upset the authorities or the farmer. But look how deep it was. We made an exact decision on that target because it was wide yet thin. And there's your proof, there's your pipe in the ground. What I believe is a pipe anyway. I might come back with Neil and get him to give me a hand excavating it a little bit more. But until then, I think I'm gonna sit this one out with the fat wheezy boys with a note from Matron. But it just goes to show you how potent the ORX is using four kilohertz in the gold mode. Get out there, give it a try. I'd really love to hear your feedback. But remember, this search method is a real test of patience. When you're digging deep holes, look after yourself. Don't dig anything which might be potentially dangerous. Just play it sensibly.